It's Friday. And you know what that means. Happy Eggplant Friday to everybody listening to Sam Roberts Show. That's right. If you want to tweet us your Eggplant Friday photos, I'm going to make Paul check all of them. I'm not going to look at one. But, hashtag Eggplant Friday. You know what day it is. Tweet them in, at SR Show, SXM, at SR Show, SXM. And leave Paul in the position where he's looking at men's genitals, tightly compacted into bright white underpants. Also, call the show, 866-969-1969, 866-969-1969. That's the number to call, Sam Roberts Show. We are live, as we are here, every day at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is exactly what time it is. Now, well, maybe it's a minute or two past, but you've got a clock. You can figure that out on your own today. Boy, oh boy, today. What a show. Trying to chill it out a little bit. Yesterday was kind of a party. It was a Friday on a Thursday. If you missed any of yesterday's show, you got to hear it. Go on demand to hear it. But today... The world is going to get explained to us. I got confronted by uh, Troy Kwan, who you know from Opie's show, uh, who came to me and said, Sam, have you heard of a rapper named Gilly the Kid? And I said, what? And he said, Gilly the Kid. Duck Kid. He's correcting me. It's duh. It's not the. It's Gilly Duck Kid. I said, you mean Gilly Duck Kid? He was like, yeah. I said, no, I've never heard of that person in my life. And he went, right. And I said, what are you doing? Stop shouting at me. Right, left? I don't know. He said, you got to check out this guy's Instagram. So I went on Gilly underscore duh underscore kid on Instagram, and I found this rapper who's from Philadelphia. Apparently he's blown up. He's got like 200,000 followers or something like that. But he's got these Instagram videos where he's got opinions on everything. Anything that's going on in the world, Gilly the Kid has figured out how to give you an opinion on it and how to incorporate the N-word within that opinion. And I said, Troy, this is a guy I got to meet. And he said, that's what I was thinking. And so Gilly the Kid is coming up here to not only uh, inform us about the world of hip-hop, but just explain everything to us. He's got these street philosophies that I think are just going to simplify and educate all of our lives today. I'm going to be learning right along with you, so it's something I'm very, very excited about happening later on today. Also... We got to talk about Brian Williams. I'll talk about that. And Brian Williams, a big fat liar, is going to be back on TV. He was on the Today Show this morning. We got clips of that. Have you heard Rachel Dolezal? The, her ex fiance wrote a song about her. I want to talk about that, but I also want to touch on uh, this shooting that happened. Again, 866 969 1969 is the phone number. 866 969 1969. Of course, the whole world, I think the whole world, at least this country, is talking about another mass shooting that happened. It is one of those things that you have to look at. You can't just justify each individual shooting. You have to look at the fact that there is something happening where people in our country, whether it's because of the way we're raised, whether it's because of uh, our delusions of grandeur, whether it's just because we love guns that much, uh, people love Love mass shootings here. I'm getting some text messages coming in. Before we get into these shootings, uh, my buddy uh, Peter Rosenberg from Hot 97, hip-hop aficionado. He's a genius when it comes to hip-hop. He said, Gilly has been known for a long time. He's a serious rapper. People say Wayne took his rhymes. It's going to be hilarious to hear him with you. Uh, Peter Rosenberg, I feel like not only am I going to be educated, but I'm gonna, I feel like I'll be able to pull out a side of Gilly that even you won't. I feel like Hot 97 is going to be educated. That's the number one hip-hop station in New York. I feel like even, even the Hot 97 listeners will be educated today. And that's what I read. He's got beef with like Lil Wayne, because apparently he has written Lil Wayne's raps for him. I mean, I'm more interested in the fact that he supports Rachel Dolezal, but I'm going to ask him about all of this. I was also reading, I read this whole article, and I'll get into this with him, about rappers who have survived shootings. He's one of them. He's been shot three times. He's been in jail. I can't wait to talk to this guy. The life that this guy has led. Let's go to Joe in Redding, Pennsylvania. What's going on, Joe? What's going on, Sam? How's it going? Good, pal. Okay, so... uh Gilly the Kid, yeah, I was going to mention... You I believe it's Gilly uh, the Kid, if I may correct you. Gilly the Kid, correct. Yes. Excuse me. <clears throat> he, uh, he was a ghostwriter writer for Lil Wayne, and uh, 
my coworker who I work with actually went to college briefly with him. He went to college? 90s. Yeah, apparently. He's an educated dude. Where'd he go to college? Do you know? Uh, it was uh, a school outside of Westchester, Pennsylvania. Oh, not the best Chester, just Westchester. Correct, yeah. <laughs> Correct. I can, I'll, well, I'll find out from him then, and I'll have to ask him when he comes in. Yeah, ask him if, ask me if he knows Scooter. Scooter. I'm going to write that down. I'm gonna, it'll be towards the end of the interview, once I've built up a rapport with him. But I'm going to ask him, hey, you remember, you remember Scooter from when you were in college? And he's going to be like, yeah, I remember that N-word. <laughs> no, the little white guy I played basketball with him, they used to hang out. Oh, I can't wait to talk to him. Thanks, Joe. Sounds like a very, yeah, yeah. very uh, interesting person. And if Peter Rosenberg from Hot 97 is excited about this, I know it's something worth being excited about. That's coming up in just a little bit here on Sam Roberts Show. But as I was talking about this mass shooting that happened uh, in Charleston, the church shooting, you know, it's very interesting because obviously it's a racially based crime. A, a, a white guy. I looked at his photo and I don't know if it's that bowl cut. I don't know what it is. But there's no way I thought that that guy was 21 years old. This guy, Dylan Roof, I guess his name is. There's no way I thought he was 21 when I looked at his photo. He looks much, much younger. And obviously, it's a racial crime in the sense that he went into a black church and killed black people specifically. Like, that's what he wanted to do. But it's very strange to me. And I guess it, it says more about the culture that we live in now in terms of the way things are reported and the way we expect them to be reported. That everybody is reporting on this as a racial crime when it's really more about the fact that this kid's mentally ill, like he's a fucking lunatic. And that's what it's about. There's no amount of sociology classes that you could have sent this kid to that would have him not be a murderer. He's a lunatic, and you can see it in his eyes. He's got, he's got dead fucking eyes. In that photo, it's 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 ridiculous, um, but I I I think that news has become kind of almost like comfort food. Like you expect what you you expect certain things, and the news is going to deliver that to you. So, for whatever reason, the way we're living right now, people expect for it to be brought up that this is a, a crime that a a white person has done against black people, right? And so that's the angle that we have to take. When in reality, this is a crime of a crazy person that has gone and murdered a bunch of people. He, I guess there are, are documents or whatever it is that says that he, he wanted to start some kind of race war and this was his plan. Now, right there, it tells you that beyond being racist, this kid is fucking crazy. When Charlie Manson was found responsible for killing people, now, I, you know, when he, when he convinced his family to go kill people, he was trying to start a race war. That's what the whole plan was. If you've ever read the book Helter Skelter, you could read clearly Charlie Manson's plan was to start a race war that he thought he would come out of on top. He thought he would be able to be the king after everything went down. But what happened, obviously, was he was fucking crazy, and so it didn't work out for him. But when we hear his story, nobody really brings up the fact that Charlie Manson is a filthy racist. They bring up the fact that he's a lunatic. And that instead of concentrating on making sure that the different ethnicities get along, we should first figure out what to do with all the crazy individuals that live in America. And the fact that half the, half the country is walking around all pilled the fuck up all the time trying to figure out which way is up. That's a, that's a much bigger problem because you can, you can, you can explain cultural diversity to so many people, and most people will get it, but those are the same people. A crazy person is not somebody that you need to explain how to treat people like people. A crazy person is crazy. They, we call them a crazy person for a reason, because they're nuts. Nick, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Hey, uh, hey Sam. Uh, yeah, one thing. Um, if you give your kid the middle name of an American gladiator character, don't buy the retard a fucking gun. What's his middle name? Storm. What a fucking loser. That's, uh, that's like... Two ends. That is... There's no doubt about it. He's a loser. Anybody that has to go through life with that middle name, I can understand how you would be driven crazy, but there's... You can't ever... I, calling this a racial crime almost lets this asshole off the hook in the sense that, well, he's a racist and our country's racist and we have to do something about this when it's like, no... Let's deal with this as two separate problems that it is. If you want to deal with the fact that there's a lot of racist people in the country, we can deal with that. Right. 
But let's deal with the fact that mentally ill people all have guns for some reason and just love shooting places up. And then, you know, John Stewart made a good point on The Daily Show that we're more concerned with terrorists abroad than we are with the fact that mentally ill people all have access to guns in America. Uh, let's go to Jerry. Hey, Sam. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, yeah. well, why is it that, uh, you know, when white people go crazy, it's mental illness, and we're going to give them that excuse? But when someone of Arab nature does it, they're extremists or Islamic extremists. Black guys go, you know, out of hand, all their thugs, they're gangbangers. And you're going to give him an asterisk? Oh, he's mentally ill? That's the problem? I mean, no. are you really for... Are you serious right now? But here's the difference. If you don't agree with that, like if you don't think we should be saying, well, you know, if you think we should be pointing out when a person of Arab descent does it or when a black person does it, it's mental illness, then fine, we should be doing that. But that doesn't mean because we're not doing it for them, we should, we're not going to do it for white people either. Well, if, I, I if, if, you're, white. if you're not calling him out on being mentally ill, but you want people of different ethnicities to be pointed out that they're mentally ill, then you're part of the problem. We should. I, I don't think. I like, I like how you spin that around, but I think part of the problem yeah. is, you know, you yourself going to explain it as mental illness. The guy is a racist. That's it. No, no, no. no. He's he's mentally ill before he's a racist. And there's lots of people and who are racist. How, and what makes you? How do you know that? So do you think it's what? What do you think is more dangerous, to be a racist with a gun or to be a mentally ill person with a gun? Because I can guarantee you a mentally ill person with a gun is going to do a lot more damage than just some guy who doesn't like Chinese people. And that's what history tells you? History's told you that, Sam? What are you, about, Dan? What are you talking about? I get all of the racial tension that's taken place now, that was mental illness? How about all, the, all of the all of the problems that racially have occurred? Why don't you go down the list? Why don't you go down the list of any mass shooting in recent memory? And tell me if it's a racist person or a mentally ill person doing it. Why are you? What about the guy in Colorado who shot up a movie theater? Is he racist or mentally ill? What about the no, black that, guy? That was the, he didn't shoot just black people. What about the black so gonna, guy? So we're going to call him because he's white. We're going to call him mentally ill. What about the black guy that was sh how have had a kid in the trunk of his car shooting white kids? He wasn't doing it for racial reasons. He was doing it because he was fucking mentally ill. Uh, I guess you don't want to see that there's a bigger problem. That's all right. There's no bigger problem than people shooting up churches and schools. That's the biggest problem there is. That's the biggest. There's no, there, 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 there is no bigger That's a problem. Major, it's a major problem. It's yes. a major problem, but let's stop excusing. Excusing it, with but it's not an excuse. As if that's the problem. You should go to the quickest solution to a problem, and the quickest solution is not to wipe out racism; it's to wipe out mental illness. That would be what you should be working on. That 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 should be where the concentration should go in this instance. We're not gonna we're not gonna wipe out either of those. Uh, that's not going to occur. But what we can do, and I'm not gonna get into this long conversation about it. But obviously, it's going to come down to this gun control again, registration. That's the real topic. It's the real issue. How do we keep it out of the hands of the people that are dangerous? And I think that's where this the whole conversation is going to end up where they all have before. And it's going to be but, unsettled. You know, I think you're right. I agree with you about that. I mean, they're, they're just going to bring it back to where it was and nothing's going to happen. But I fully believe that keeping guns, keeping guns out of racists' hands... That could be issue number two. Keeping guns out of the hands of the mentally ill will be number one. Yeah, well, look, they, they, neither of them need them. I mean I, I mean, I agree on that, but I just feel like constantly the media is going to this mentally ill campaign when it comes to a white person that goes off the chain. But they're not. They're calling this, they're going to the racial thing with this kid. Well, then I, sorry, I apologize. You're the one that brought up mentally ill. But either way, it seems like it's something we hear a lot. You know, and when the guys in Boston, you know, they have a problem, you know, uh, it's Islamic extremists. You know, I think they were mentally ill also. Well, I'm sure really I'm sure hard, that they were really hard to just it's hard to put a. It's hard to put a. No, I, you know, I get what you're saying. I get I, I get what you're saying. And, and I think that, yeah, I think that those guys are mentally ill. But when when you're uh, at part of an organized terrorist group or you're raised to commit terrorist acts against a certain country, you can at least bring that up. Like, I, I, I don't agree at all with demonizing all of Islam because of Islamic extremists. You know, I, I think that's wrong. But, yeah. but I think that there are 
It's one thing. This kid is is a lone nut, and he's a mentally ill person. There's Absolutely. a difference. We somehow have to figure out, though, yeah. how, how how to curb the bullshit that's going on with all of this. It's out of well, hand. And it's you know like, what? Uh, one. Yeah, and you're right, Jerry. I actually agree with you on that because what happens is something like this happens. And you want to figure out the solution. You want to make sure it never happens again. So what do you do? The people who care about uh, ending racism start talking about racism. And the people who care about no. gun control start talking about gun control. And the people who talk about mental illness start talking about mental illness. And then the gun defenders start defending their guns before anybody's even threatened to take them away. And everybody just becomes so agenda-driven that everybody forgets that nine people died at fucking church. Exactly, exactly. And then, and then, because, he, well, you just need to look. I'm going to drop the phone. You nailed it. That's the truth. All right, buddy. I appreciate the call. I, 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 I appreciate the got it, man. discussion. Good. Let's go to Dan. Hello, Sam. How you doing, buddy? Good. That caller was fucking mentally ill. Jesus Christ. <laughs> there was, I mean, there's so, there so many fucking things to say on this topic, but, like, you got to fix the mental health care in this country first. You can't, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I think that's... That, that's in Cleveland, if yeah. you go to buy a gun, all right, they do, like, a background check, and you can't be a fucking coming out of the loony bin. You know, you can't be a felon, so it's not bad. And if you take... If you just say, fuck it, no guns, we're going to get rid of guns, a fucking mentally ill person is going to find a rock on the, on the street and just go club people to death in the head with it. They're the, mentally ill. They're mentally ill. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't matter if they're white, black, whatever. If they're fucking mentally ill, they're going to kill you if they want to kill you. It's yeah, and, and, and because there's no guns. Thanks, buddy. And this mentally ill person developed this theory of, that was ra his, his racially based theory. His racism is due to... His mental illness, the same way Charlie Manson's racism was due to his mental illness. And for some reason in the 60s and 70s, people could f realize that Charlie Manson's a lunatic. But we f flash forward to 2015, and everybody's so obsessed with labeling somebody a racist that we forget we've got a huge mental illness problem going on because everybody can just get all the pills that they want. Justin, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Hey, I just wanted to tell you that uh, I totally agree with you on the fact of the mental illness thing, because I think that it's I don't think you should focus on the fact that it's racist, because, first of all, someone has to be mentally ill to do that, whether they like black people or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you have to be mentally ill to go as far as he did. And, and now there's reports saying and I don't even know why they bother reporting this, but uh he say, he told apparently this kid who killed all these people told police that he almost didn't go through with it because everyone was so nice to him, but he had to go through with his mission. Is what he said, and it's like yeah, that's a, you're you're talking to a, a crazy kid who probably spent way too long reading about the fucking Joker in comic books or whatever it was. I don't know, but you you, you don't right. blame. It's not it's not because we have poor race relations in this country. It's not because of video games. It's not because of comic books. It's not because of any of that stuff. It's because we don't know how to uh, uh, treat the mentally ill people. That's why. That's what it is. Because we're looking for every other excuse in the book, as opposed to he's on the wrong fucking dosage. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, if I had a terrible problem with Disney World and I hated everything Disney, and I went in there and just shot the place up, is it is it because of my problem with Disney World, or is it because I'm crazy? Yeah, it's like well. That mouse has been wearing red pants for so long, infuriating so many people that hate red pants. It's like, what, there's no discussion. Thanks, Justin. Hi. Let me go to John in Texas. What's going on, John? Hey, Sam. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, how, we, how we figure out somebody's, number one, mentally ill, number two, mentally ill and not being treated the right way, number three, they're so mentally ill that... I'm scared that they're going to go kill a bunch of people, so I have to do something about it ahead of time. Well, I don't think you I mean, can. I, I think that there's, I mean, there's something, you have to figure out how to keep guns out of fucking lunatics' hands. I don't know how you well, do it. I'd love to have Obama on my show and we could have a discussion, but apparently I'm not Mark Maron. Uh, I will, but, you're never, yeah. never going to keep guns out of, out of the hands of people who want to kill a bunch of people. And 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 the knee jerk reaction. I mean, I'm a gun guy, and I'm not sitting here trying to defend. Oh, now they're going to take my guns away. But you know, like you said, the, the people who want to state that argument, that's all they see. They got their blinders on to that. Mm -hmm. But in in this now, when the mass shootings go down, it's like you said, instant exploitation. It's racist. It's mentally ill. They're they're gun lunatics, and 
I think the people that exploit the situation is doing injustice to each individual cause. I, all of these shooters are drugged out. Yeah. With a counter drugged out, crazy, weird, drug induced, manic episodes. And that's how they're treating the mentally ill, but that's the totally number one acceptable thing in the whole formula. So the mentally ill aspect is not going to get the same play that the racist gun stuff is. Because yeah. that's the acceptable way of treating the mentally ill. Well, he was already on drugs, so now he has to be a racist gun nut. Yeah, I think it's a way tougher... I think you're right, John. Thanks. I think it's a way tougher conversation to have when you realize that we've got too many crazy people with too much access in America. Like, we've got too many rights that people who are fucking mentally ill can just walk around and do whatever they want because they can't control themselves. You know? They can't... And that's not to make an excuse because I think this idiot should be locked up forever. I, I'm, I'm saying that the reason he did it was because he was mentally ill, not because he was racist. But, that said, he should still be locked up forever. Uh, Dave in Toronto. Hey Sam, how are you today? Good, buddy. Uh, yeah, it, it's like I said. It's, it, I hope they don't focus on that. This is a racially motivated crime because of the fact that I, there's lots of rednecks with guns, and you don't see them going on killing sprees uh, with genuine hatred for black people or Asian people or anything like that. Yeah, they're just it's shooting their guns in the air and shouting racial slurs. It's it's safe yeah, for that, everybody. But yeah, but like I said, it's it, it's it's this guy. This guy's explanation to himself of why he did the crime was that it was racial. That's his, that's his justification for doing it to himself, and then he just basically told everybody that it was racially. It was racial. That's why. I'm not nuts. It's racial. Right, right, right. All right, thanks, buddy. Let's go to Tim. Tim, you there? Prime time, <laughs> Tammy Brand Muffin. That's right. I'd like to ask you a question, then I'll hang up and listen to myself on the radio. Yeah, it's gonna be great. If you go into a church and shoot it up and kill a bunch of people, does that qualify you as brave and courageous, or do you first have to chop your dick off and get breast implants? I'm gone. Alright, you go. I think it's probably more brave and courageous to chop your dick off, because people make fun of you if you chop your dick off, and it's not hurting anybody. It's just being your true self. I don't buy... I would have. I'd love to have Jim Norton on here, because I heard him on Obi's show talking about, you know, the the technically brave and courageous don't have to be positive things, which I think I disagree with completely. I think there's nothing brave or courageous about doing something like this. And you could argue that it's it's it's, it's kind of cowardice to know you know you're going into a church, you know it's a whole bunch of unarmed people, you know you're tricking people. It's it's just it's it's shitty. This this, this is the problem. You turn on your TV and you hear this news. And you can't believe it's happening again. Like, how can there be this many garbage human beings on the planet? Like, how can this keep happening? I don't interact with people on a day-to-day -day basis that are this horrible of human beings. Like, where are they storing all these people? And you can't believe that this continues to happen. Then the story immediately goes to either news outlets that are trying to milk it for ratings or... People who are trying to advocate for whatever cause they have. People try to, they have their cause du jour, and they want to advocate for, they want to use this story to help push whatever agenda it is that they have. And they push it forward as much as possible to the point that we, we lose the humanity of the whole thing. Gordon in South Carolina. Sammy, how are you, bud? Good, buddy. Good. Listen, you know, you made a really interesting point a few minutes ago. I was listening to the Opie and Jim show this morning, and, you know, they kind of, they did a good job of addressing it for the most part. Yeah. But the thing I don't hear is, you know, you said that we have all these crazy people with yeah. access to guns. But what people aren't talking about is the access to mental health care, the funding for mental health care has been on the decline year after year for, the, for decades. There's no doubt in my mind that mental health care is the number one problem that we're dealing with you know outside of the government in terms of the problems that human beings have to deal with and, the, and and bringing down crime and all that stuff there's no doubt that mental illness is by far the worst walk around california and take a look at their homeless population every single one of them is out of their minds now i don't know if that's drug induced i don't know what it is but they're just roaming around and one of those people is going to do some damage eventually now you end up you end up with a with a kid like this who's got a family who's got all this stuff and somehow he manages to last 21 years being this destructive 
lunatic and not getting the care. Now, a lot of people talk about and they say we have to figure out how we can see this coming and that way we can avoid it. And that doesn't work. It's not fucking minority report where we're trying because then people are just getting arrested for doing nothing. That's insane. That that would never happen or work. But what could work is if, if the people fighting against guns chilled out and realized we're probably not going to get rid of them. And if the people fighting for guns chilled out and realized, you know what, they're not taking them and all got together and fucking figured out how to deal with crazy people. It would benefit everybody because the people who don't like guns would be like, oh, good, there's less shootings. And the people who like their guns would be like, oh, good, there's more responsible gun owners. But and here's where I kind of did. I, I, I don't completely disagree with what you said, Sam. There is one point, though, that I would like to disagree with on you, mm-hmm. uh, disagree on with you. And that is we wouldn't see it coming. There's no way for us to see it coming. No, you I can't disagree on that point to a point, because if these folks had access to care, to proper mental health care, in some cases, we would see it coming and it could be intervened on. Would we always get it? Of course not. We yeah, and I mean, always going to catch everybody. Look, I, I think you can maybe see it coming in the sense that okay, we can see this illness and we can treat this illness. Right. But I, I mean, I, there are people who say you know if you lock them up before, then you can you can't lock somebody up for a crime that you of think they're going to come in. It's ridiculous. And, and I mean that that was shown in you know if you look back at the twenties, the thirties, and forties of mental health care, what did they do? They had sanatoriums. They locked people up at the first sign of something, right? Right. You know we can't do that. We no. Should, Past that, but but yeah, because we, we we're evolving as a people in the sense that we won't right. just lock people up, but we're devolving in the sense that everybody's just sticking to an agenda and running with it. Absolutely. All right, right. buddy. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, bud. Take Thanks care. for the Good call. Job, by the way, I appreciate it, Gordon. Right. Uh, we got a lot to get to today. I could talk about this all day, but I'm sure you'll hear about it everywhere. So uh, you know, turn on Fox News or whatever because Gilly the Kid is coming in here. He's here already. That's right. He's a rapper that's on time, okay? So all you race-baiting people out there with your little stereotypes and you think you know what's going on, he was here early, as a matter of fact, and I appreciate that. That's the type of respect Sam Roberts' show gets. When we get back, we're going to have the world explained to us in a big, big way by Gilly the Kid. Get your calls in now, 866-969-1969. We'll be right back. I create a nice juxtaposition here on Sam Roberts' show. <laughs> Welcome back. We are live. You want to call up 866-969-1969, 866-969-1969, or you can tweet along with the show, SR Show SXM on Twitter. <coughs> That's SR Show SXM on Twitter. And you're going to want to see what's going on in this studio because the man himself, Gilly the Kid, is here. What's going on, Gilly? What's up, Sam? How are you? I never had a bad day in my life. I'm still on that streak, you know? I do. It doesn't look like you've ever had a bad day. You come in, you've got a credit card on your hat, a bag of money on on your T-shirt. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any of them in my pocket. Oh. Well, it looks like you spent everything that you have on your jewelry. Yeah, I spent it all. In everything. It's gone. It's gone. There's gold and diamonds and everything. My God. How long were you? Well, first of all, how long have you been rapping for? I've been rapping over a decade. You know, my my initial group was Major Figures. I was a young pup. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a, a distribution deal with Warner Brothers. Uh put out a single called Yeah, That's Us. It was the number two single in the country. You know, I've been on a few record labels, but because of, uh you know, situations, I haven't been able to put an album out. I, I really think that God wanted me in the situation that I'm in now. So, so you've been doing this for ten years and not able to put an album out. No, I've been putting out a lot of mixtapes, a lot right. of music, but you know, albums and mixtapes are two different things. You know, right? What I mean? Albums to me are more personal. Uh-huh. You know, you have to get more in deep and you know let people know who you are. Mixtapes is I just jump on beats and right. You know what I mean? So, and the mixtape, the mix that's more under the table money. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's money that nobody needs. That's money that goes I to was, jewelry. I was trying. Trying to skip that part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you got an album, that's when like you use that money to buy a car, buy a house, buy things with the uh, paper trails behind right, them. Absolutely. Mixtapes, you can buy jewelry and all kinds of great stuff. Chronic. You know, Chron- like, yeah. Fifths of Hennessy. <laughs> Whatever you need to do. Drugs. My- now, you, on top of being, you've been in, uh, you've gotten in some trouble with uh, the drug business. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, it's happened. I like to say I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> well, yeah, you were in the wrong place 
at the wrong time carrying 89 pounds of marijuana. Is that true? Yeah, yeah that, unfortunately. Right. And then that led you to the wrong place at the wrong time, which was jail? Absolutely. Right. That's definitely the wrong place at any time. You were only there for what, 11, 10, 11 days? 10 days, yeah. And then uh, I bailed out. I had a nebula hearing, which uh, What's takes... What's that? Th well, if you get locked up with any type of drugs yes. in Philadelphia, I don't know if they have it in New York, but you have to have... I, I don't either. I'm not. A, it's not my business. A, I'm a, a broadcaster. Nibia, yeah. Yeah. A nebula hearing, which is it takes three to ten days, and uh, you got to go to court and show where the money that is coming from that you're bailing out with. Because, you know, a lot of drug dealers oh, get locked right. up. Because and they, they want to make sure that you're not getting bailed out with more drug right, money. Right, absolutely. It seems like a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah, at right. that point. So, yeah, I had to have a, a nebula hearing, which and took three to ten days. And, unfortunately, mine came on the tenth day. Wow. So, they knew, though. Right. They knew. Absolutely. I'm like, no, <laughs> we finally got Gilly. Right. <laughs> He's t we're getting him for the whole 10 days. Absolutely. And it, I was sick. You were like sick? 10 days felt like 10 months. <laughs> I would <Yeah>. imagine. <laughs> what? So what, what What? was it like? Well, first of all, now, so what happens with that charge? Were you found not uh, guilty? Yeah, absolutely. It, you were? Absolutely. How'd you pull that off? Uh, well, good lawyer, Guy Sciola, you know, shout out to Guy. Oh, I did. <laughs> shout out to the whole team. I got locked up with five other people. Mm -hmm. And really... uh. Somebody took the fall? Well, honestly, honestly, good fellas. honestly, I left the scene of the crime, and I got locked up three blocks away without anything on me. So huh. that's really what happened. I see. And I saw... You but had the paper a, is not going to tell you that part. No, 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 they won't. <laughs> but you, you, you tell your story, because I remember I, I heard a lyric just this morning. It was something about... Uh, the fact that you had a Jewish lawyer so the case wouldn't stick? <laughs> right. Is that right? <laughs> you God, shout out to Guy Sciola, man. Yeah. What was Good the lyric? What was uh, I was foolish. Could have charged with the A, but my lawyer Jewish make the charges go away. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Because what you do in that one rhyme scheme is you talk about exactly what happened. You take personal responsibility Absolutely. when you say you're foolish. Absolutely. And then you move forward. I don't blame anybody else for my actions. No. You know? No. Never. You, and that was the only time you were in jail? The only time. What was that like? Um, really, it wasn't. It was it, it was a smooth ride, the jail part of it. You know, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the part that hurt me was, you know, I don't eat lunch meat. I don't eat fruit like that. <laughs> so, really, I You're lost. You're a picky like, eater? Yes, a very picky eater. So, in 10 days, I lost about 15 pounds. I worry about that, too. I'm a picky eater. Right. And I worry about, number one, if I was in jail, I wouldn't eat well. Right. But also, I would become someone's girlfriend, I think, very quickly. <laughs> well, I don't I don't think I'd come in with the problem. gilly <laughs> respect. But you're very well known in Philadelphia. Absolutely. Well, I like to think I'm very no well known across the world. Well, you now know? you are. You're on Sam Roberts' show, Absolutely. for God's sake. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so when you go to jail in Philly, mm -hmm. do people know who you are when you uh, go in? When I go, oh, shit, gilly the kid is here. Absolutely. The king of Philly's here. King. That's What's what they up? said? King. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely. When did you become the king of Philly? Uh, since maybe about 2005. I think all the hustlers and uh, street people, they, they got up and they voted. And they voted me the king. That's amazing. <laughs> and is that because they're like, look, he's good? Well, he was. At one point, he was good at selling drugs. <laughs> He's good at making music. I mean, he could do it all. <laughs> Absolutely. And he can dress well. He does. He, he, Absolutely. Yeah, the whole Got thing. Got a great smile. <laughs> yeah. Good sense of humor. He's well, <laughs> the reason what really drew my attention to you, because I try to stay up on what's going on mm -hmm. in hip hop, but what really drew my attention to you was your Instagram account. Because mm -hmm. you put out uh, videos. Yes. And you kind of, they're kind of, you'll touch on stuff that's topical. Mm hmm. But you'll also just have life philosophies on there. Absolutely. I mean, I'm just giving out game. Right. You know, I'm an OG where I come from, so the youngins want the game. And, I, you know, and they understand that it's not too many things as far as life that I haven't been through. You mm -hmm. know, I've been both spectrums. You know what I mean? I grew up in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm an all-city basketball player. Uh, I've been shot. I've been locked up. On the flip side, I went to a 95% white college. Um, Do you know a guy named Scooter? I know a few scooters. <laughs> Somebody called up here earlier and said, ask him if you know Scooter, if you remember Scooter for basketball in college. Well, no, nah, he must have came off the bench or something. <laughs> <laughs> he was, Scooter wasn't that good. But, you, but you've lived through it all, so you've yeah, seen all so, these things. And I just like to, you know, give back some game. You know me, I... I 
I make it a duty. I do gang prevention. You know what I mean? You do? Me, Ving Rames. Shout out to the actor Ving Rames. Uh, yeah. Big U out of California. You know, I do gang prevention and we go to all the cities and even the St. Thomas, St. Croix, uh, the Dominican Republic and we do gang prevention. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, so, you know, I just feel as though all the things I've been through in life, God's blessed me to be in a position where I can go back and the kids will listen because they feel like, well, he's been through it. Right. He actually he's not knows. just coming in yes. here like, oh, stay in school, do the right. No, he's actually been through it, so they tend to listen a little more. And uh, game respects game. Absolutely. Which is why I brought you here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and why, uh, why I wanted to share you bringing up that you had a good smile. <laughs> instinctly uh, uh, or immediately reminded me of one of your Instagram videos. Let me play this audio okay. so everybody can know exactly what I'm talking about. This is the type of thing that, uh, that Gilly the Kid, Gilly underscore duh underscore kid on Instagram, will come at you with just on an, on an average day. And I don't give a fuck because I ain't got no insecurities. I know I'm an ugly nigga, but my bitch bad, nigga. My bitch drop dead gorgeous, nigga. God ain't blessed me with good looks, nigga. He blessed me with a hell of a mouthpiece and a long dick. You hear me? Right. I do hear you. <laughs> and that's what you meant by your nice smile, your mouthpiece. Right, absolutely. And I'll tell you this, Gilly. I watched the video. Your bitch is bad, if I may respectfully say so. Absolutely, man. And I'm going to assume, as far as the long dick thing goes, that you're telling the truth. Absolutely. Oh, you also... I, I love Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Sam has a great personality. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. I'm glad that you recognize that. You also... Uh, I have the long dick. He has the great personality. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm going to start... Now... Here's the, my problem, though. I felt like I was watching your Instagram videos, and I was like, I could start doing something like that, where I take my philosophies, mm -hmm. and I just go on Instagram, and I say it uh, succinctly. You're very good at being concise and succinct. You get out in 15 seconds. Uh -huh. But I don't think I can use that N-word like you can use that N-word. And uh -huh. right there, that's what attracted my attention, if I'm being honest to you. Yeah. The, your, your, your artful use of the N-word was like, that sounds cool, what yeah. he's saying. <laughs> yeah. I believe him. But I don't think I could do you that. You got killer. permission from me. You can use it from bro. the king of Philadelphia. As yes. long as it's not the e, the E R. No, 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 no. That's not what I was talking the a. about. It's the A. <laughs> right. Oh, I don't want any trouble. It's the A. It's the A. I promise you that. You, you, know, also, you got permission, and if anybody has a problem with it, you just come holler at me and we'll right. straighten it out. Come see. What's it like? I was reading an article. That's how I get my street information from articles. <laughs> I was reading an article about, uh, uh, it was a list of rappers that have survived being shot. Mm -hmm. You were on the list. I was. Yes, you yes. were shot. It said you, I think, uh, three times. Yes. In each arm and, and a leg, is that right? No, actually. Do you have bullet scars that I can see? Yeah. Oh, my one of God. Them right there. They one in right here, came out right here. Another one was in the foot. And another one is right here. In the gut. Like yes, right in the rib area. No, it wasn't straight in. It was more like... Then, oh, like it grazed yeah. over you. Thank yeah. God. Thank God. You wouldn't have survived that one. I, absolutely not. Ooh. It would have been, it's so hard <laughs> to say goodbye. <laughs> Who shot you? I don't know. You don't. <laughs> We, what? Even if I knew, I didn't know right now. <laughs> well, <I> thought, <laughs> yeah. Even if you did know, in this instance, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Right. What does that feel like when you get shot and you're like, holy, like this is, like, you, you know, you've, you've been witness to it, I'm sure. You've, been, you've talked about it. You've, the culture I mean, is I all around panic. you. You didn't. No, that's the one thing I didn't do. Uh, you know, one of my friends drove me to the hospital. Uh, it really wasn't painful, like... To get shot three times wasn't painful? It wasn't painful like people say it was. You Do you think I, mean? I would find it painful? I don't... It, it depends on your, uh, your tolerance. tolerance level. It's not, you not know? high. For me, it was like... Ah, oh, it's burning a little bit. Just hurry up. Drive a little faster. Like, I'm bleeding. I don't want to die from bleeding to death. Right. But other than that, it wasn't... Tattoos hurt more. Than bullets. Yes. I've got a couple tattoos. Maybe I, mean, I can handle again, a bullet. But then again, mines were all in and out. The bullets, you mean? Yes. So yes. it didn't hit any bone, thank God. Yeah. So, so it, go, yeah. it went like in your right, in your wrist, and out your wrist. Yeah, one in right there. You see? Yeah. And if you could, right there if you could remove your your right gold there. and diamond encrusted watch <laughs> to show me, yes. Uh, I have a hairband on my wrist, um, and then in your foot. Yeah, in my heel. Oh, in your heel. Because I, I said, uh, Decepticons, retreat. <laughs> oh, you started. So, so you start running away. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know, did you start, uh, so were you, how did it go? You shot in the hand, and yeah. then you start running. Shot in the wrist first. Okay, so you shot in the wrist. Yeah, and then I, pop! <laughs> and then in the gut, and then you're like, I'm fucking out of here. Right, right. Uh, you know, I'm gone. I'm Carl Lewis time. And then they were like, well, before you go, here's one more. Right, here's one more. You're like, God right. damn it, not my new sneakers. <laughs> Right. He right. must have a pair of number five Jordans. Right. <laughs> it's worse than a scuff mark. Right. Yes. And so, as you're going to the hospital mm -hmm. with three bullet wounds, mm -hmm. is any part of you think to yourself, like, you know what? I understand this is kind of part of the rap culture and it's been something that gets talked about and everything, but I think I'm in too deep. I don't think I want to do this anymore. I didn't, that didn't cross my mind. Never. What crossed my mind was I can't believe this little fucker just shot me. <laughs> <laughs> like, this piece of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and that was really what was crossing my mind. I, you know, honest, to be honest. Were you able to ever inflict any revenge without going into specifics? Uh, um, no, I was not able to. <laughs> 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 it's so weird. <laughs> You were not able to, but you still seem to be in a good mood today. I'm in a great mood. Oh, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Well, Gilly was uh, on his Instagram talking about jail as well. Mm -hmm. And it, I learned from jail because a lot of rappers, they come forward and they kind of glamorize, well, I've been to jail, so right. that gives me street credibility. It doesn't give you street credibility at all. I don't think all. so. Because you know how many crackheads are in jail? Probably a lot. Right. Right. <laughs> that doesn't give them any street credibility. No, they don't come out of jail as heroes. <laughs> right. They no, come out of jail as crackheads <laughs> right. so looking for crack. So, you know, it, uh, you know the, the youth, they got the wrong perception of what jail is. Jail doesn't mean anything, but you got caught. And You're you know not, what? I think that that's a message that should be delivered, but like, honestly, let's say Jesse Jackson tries to deliver that message. The youth's not going to listen to that guy because he's talking like an right. adult. This is what the youth will listen to via Instagram, uh, Gilly the Kid on Instagram. Little cousin just tell me he a real nigga and then shouted out his PP number. So going to jail make you a real nigga? That don't make you real nigga jails for suckers, nigga. It just mean you got caught. You ain't good at playing hide and seek. Right? <laughs> right. 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 And, and you know, people on my Instagram and my Twitter, they always say, why do you say right all the time? Right? Because right goes with everything. It does. You know, I'm going up to see Sam today and to be on his show. Right. Right. Look at them girls over there with that fat ass. Right. 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 <laughs> and you can put it on a t-shirt. You can put it on a sticker. It's you a good put catchphrase. It anywhere, You're you a know? businessman. LeBron is hoping that he'll come back and get a championship next year. Right. 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 <laughs> See, I'm going to have Sam saying, right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's contagious. Absolutely. We were talking about, uh, speaking of the N-word, mm -hmm. you know, we were talking about uh, Chet Hayes. You know what Chet Hayes is? No. Who's Chet Hayes? He's Tom Hanks' son. Okay. The, you know Tom Hanks is? Yes, absolutely. He's in uh, Big and Philadelphia and, Legendary and Toy actor. Story. and yeah. So Tom Hanks' son, Chet Hayes, is a rapper. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't know that? No. Yeah, he's a rapper. Believe it or not, he's, he's of Caucasian descent. Yes. But he was getting in trouble because he went on Instagram, mm -hmm. and he tried to use that dreaded N-word. Yeah. And they were all over him for it. And he was describing his friends. He did it with the A, not yeah. the ER. Well, I don't have any problem with it. You don't. Not at all. Bro. You don't have a problem I'm with I'm not Chet living Hayes. in 19... This is not 1959. Let's march to Alabama. And I'm not with that, man. Come on, man. That's played out, man. Long as a person ain't saying what Raleigh Cooper said <laughs> <laughs> from the Eagles. <laughs> now, that was different. When oh, he was... I'll mess all you niggers! <laughs> now, that was like, oh, Raleigh. Right. I know you, bro. You never talked to me like that. But So you've met him before? Yeah, absolutely. So when that... Okay, so I when some, all the Eagles, all the Sixers. You cannot come to Philadelphia yeah. and not, not come get with the King, man. Right. And you, just be honest, they all love rap music. You're like the New York cop in American Gangster who says, how about you don't come over that bridge without checking with me first? No, nah, I, I, I can never... Associate oh. myself with being a cop. You can't. That's not good for credibility. <laughs> no, that's not good. For that's not good for your image. That's off brand, as we say. <laughs> that's off brand. <laughs> that's off brand. Okay, uh, but of course you're the similar. King of, similar. Absolutely. Because you're the king of Philadelphia. Absolutely. So when you see a guy that you know, mm -hmm. he's had a couple beverages. We're talking about the player from the Eagles, of course, who was at that country concert. Mm -hmm. First of all, it was a country concert. Mm -hmm. There were no N words at the country concert. Right. 
Right. But he started using the N-word with the ER, saying he was going to beat people up. Mm-hmm. He's being very hateful. And he started being accused of being a racist. Mm-hmm. Do you then say to yourself, I didn't know that guy was a racist? Or do you say, I know that guy. He had a bad night. He's yeah, I say he had a bad night. That's what you say. Yeah, because Riley, Riley Coop is a good dude. What do you think of, of all the emphasis that's put on race right now? I mean... Honestly, uh, to me, you know, I don't I don't never really pull a race card because, you know, when you're growing up in the hood, you know, it's, it's like two perceptions. When you when you're growing up in a suburb, the only perception you have of 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 young black minorities is what you see on the news or and Instagram. You, well, right. <laughs> and when you grow up in the hood, the only perception you have is, oh, the white man's trying to hold me back. Hold it. And then I go to a 95% white college. Right. They took a, a young African-American kid straight out the ghetto. I mean, straight hood. Put me in a 95% white college. And I said, these are the nicest people. <laughs> <laughs> I've been deceived. Like They're like, well, you want to go home? You want to use my car? And I'm like... Use your car. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you playing? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Nobody ever asked me to use their car in North Philly. Right. You want to use my car? <laughs> it's and, like, and you get a way, lecture. I, Can I use your car, motherfucker, before I let you use this? <laughs> I need it back by 7 o'clock. It better be a half a tank of gas. You know, it's like, so, you know, my whole perception changed once I went to a 95% white college. How did you, know you end up there? I mean, uh, I played basketball. You know, I was heavily recruited there. Um, huh. uh, coach, I met with Coach Zeke. What he college was, was it? Cabrini. Okay. Uh, you know, he was a great coach. So, you know, he took me under his wing, showed me a lot of things, took real good care of me. So, shout out to Coach Zeke, man. And, and was the idea for you to play basketball at first? Absolutely. I did play basketball. And was that, but is that what you wanted to do professionally? Uh, absolutely. And then, uh, fortunately, the streets took over. They and, did. <laughs> did you finish college? Uh, no, I no. actually only have a year left, a little over a year. Are you gonna? You think you're gonna go back? Yeah, eventually. You think so? Just to do it. Just to say you did it. Just to do it, see some young college chicks. Right. You know. And plus, <laughs> now you can roll back in there, the king of Philadelphia, right. like ninety-five. For- <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> I went to Syracuse with Carmelo Anthony. It was yeah. the same freshman year. Yeah. We didn't hang in the same social circles. Yeah. But white college girls at Syracuse University. Wow. Just unbelievable. Threw themselves white at White college man. girls at Cabrini. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was unbelievable. Before you were even the king. Before I was the king. <laughs> when I was the rook. Well, they must have heard about the long dick <laughs> that we heard about earlier <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> and the mouthpiece. Yeah, they definitely heard about it. They used to like the way it moved in the shorts. <laughs> <when> I <was laughs> <Yeah. playing. laughs> I've only heard the stories. Um, I also wanted to ask you about all, like, you've had, you've had hip hop beats before. You're talking about uh, problems with record labels that haven't, yeah. you were on Cash Money. Yeah. That I record was. label. I was signed to Cash Money for three and a half years. Yeah, and that's Lil Wayne's record label. And, Absolutely. And, and, and shout and, out to Lil Wayne, man. Shout out to Baby, too. Baby, get that man his money, man. Stop that, man. Well, I, that's what it's I... not cool. I was reading about you having beef with Lil Wayne, and you wrote some of his songs, and that's what I was reading. And then I saw a video after Lil Wayne went to jail that you put out just kind of professing, like, your support. I mean, absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, for me, you know... Rapping is just rapping. So if 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 we get into a rap beef, that's just a rap beef. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've been in real beefs. I know you've been shot three so times. Rapping is just an art form. And to me, the last time I checked, um, cool uh, LL Cool J and yeah. and and Cool Mo D and uh, the KRS One and Queens Bridge, and it, it's been a. Uh, you know, a battle type of thing. Let's okay. You want to do this lyrically? We could do it. So you, for, when I step into play, it's like, is we are we battling or is this for real? Right. You know what I mean. So no, I don't want to battle with him, and I don't want to go back and forth with him. But I never start anything. Wayne dissed me first. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. But at the end of the day, that's old news. We got past that. I sat down. I hollered with baby. We looked each other in the eyes as men. He said, "I don't have a problem with you. I wish you the best." I said, "Vice versa." So you know, I mean, I never had a real issue with Wayne. To if we see each other, it was going to be some drama because it's not beef. And so you put that video out as if to say. I mean, there's I don't real see life and there's in entertainment. Jail. Absolutely, this was entertainment. This was well, entertainment. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, this yeah. is real life when you go to jail. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you know, hold your head, and I hope you be back on the bricks soon. Yeah, 
What's back on the bricks soon? Home. Right. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you meant actual bricks or bricks of drugs or I didn't. I wasn't sure. And I wanted, well, it's for the listeners. So I understood, but I Absolutely. wanted to make sure my listeners were informed. Um, and what about your? You got to do a Twitter fight with Soldier Boy? Is that true? No, I'm gonna slap the shit out of Soldier Boy. You are <laughs> absolutely. You that's are. not. That's real life. What happened with Soldier Boy? I mean, you know, I do this thing where you know, I I I got a diamond tester. I actually carry my diamond tester around. Okay, first of all, you're pulling it out of a Louis Vuitton book bag. Right. So if I bump into any rappers, mine's a Jan Sport. Right. Go ahead. If I bump into any rappers, mm -hmm. you have to do this diamond tester challenge. Okay, what is it? I'm gonna test your diamonds. <laughs> to see if they're real diamonds. Absolutely. I mean, why not? You're right. a rapper. Right. You're an athlete. Right. You're an entertainer. Right. You have diamonds on. Mm -hmm. I have a diamond tester. <laughs> right. <laughs> why not? Like, you know, what do we have to lose? Because you'd put your diamonds up. You got uh, you got, I, a, you got a, a, a gold chain on it and you right. got a, uh, with diamonds on it. Right. Lots of diamonds. You got a gold watch on with diamonds right. on it. You have a solid gold rope on. Right. How much, how much money do you think your jewelry is worth right now that you're wearing? Um, the ballpark guesstimate. It's a lot of math. About a hundred, a hundred dollars? No, hundred thousand. Absolutely. Jesus I mean, just for the Rolex alone, this Rolex was forty five thousand dollars. Forty five thousand dollars. Right. You know, you could just tell the time on your phone. And this right here was twenty four thousand dollars. Your necklace. Yes. It so. says what does it say? Religion records. Yeah, absolutely. And it's twenty four thousand yeah. dollars. And then. You know, this is over a quarter kilo of gold. Yes, this Cuban link. So, do you have any? Uh, do you have any like uh, financial people that go like this? May not be the wisest investment all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you do. And yes. but you say, well, you know That's what? I say, mind your business. Mind yeah. your business. <laughs> you get paid, I get paid. Right. And the king <laughs> needs to wear gold. Absolutely. So what happens? So you have a diamond tester. Uh huh. And you're going to use it on Soldier Boy. Is that what you're telling no, me? No, I'm going to slap the shit out of Soldier why? Boy. What's the difference? Okay. Why okay. are you going to slap Soldier Listen, Boy? You know. I was I was at my 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 residence back in at home mm -hmm. and I got a tweet and the tweet had a picture of Soldier Boy posing with he had a, like a hundred dollar bill on top but under it was a bunch of loose leaf paper mm -hmm. and he got caught frauding so somebody who knew that I do the diamond tester said oh they added me on Twitter and said <laughs> oh man Soldier Boy got caught out here bad Gilly frauding <laughs> he might have to do that diamond tester challenge sure. I replied, I looked at the picture because the picture's crazy. He's like this, like he got money in his loose leaf paper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you gotta be careful. You gotta right. be that public. You gotta be a little more careful right. than that. So I just responded, oh man, that's crazy. Right. From the picture. And the next thing you know, I got a bunch of tweets. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna look you in your eyes and, and, um, and, and shoot you in your face. And that's what? all my, that's all my dead cousin. And, and. That doesn't sound like rap beef to me. Right. And see where I'm from? Yeah. We could we could do all that, but once you tell somebody you're going to kill them mm -hmm. and you're going to look them in the eyes and murder them and see I don't I, one thing about me, mm -hmm. when you've been shot, you don't take nobody for granted. Right. At all. Right. So I'm going to slap blood in his mouth on sight. You will. Absolutely. That's incredible. It is incredible. That's incredible. I mean, for that then I hope for your sake that you do. I don't want to be involved. No. And then th this what really is pissing me off. Tell me. Because it died down. And, you know, things die down a little. Sure. And then I'm in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And this kid is in Dubai the same time. Mm -hmm. And he tweets out, just bumped into Gilly the Kid and slapped him. What? Did he? He's giving me a look. I don't think he did. Now, come on. I don't think he really does. I don't think he really does. You got, we got a better chance of walking outside and seeing Moses <laughs> on 5th and 7th and Broadway. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's like, okay, so you just want to keep pushing that button. Yeah. You just want to just, this is really just funny you, funny games to you. This is not funny games to me because me personally, I'm never threatening somebody's life. Right. That's because you've been in a situation absolutely. where your life is literally on the line. Absolutely. Right. So if you threaten somebody's life, you have to be serious. Well, for Philadelphia, I, I got 10 main, main homies. We all been shot. And Philadelphia is, is like a surprise when you ain't been shot. It's like you, you haven't been shot. Yeah. Where, well, where you live at? Right. Like, well, here, I got something for you. Though. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's like when you when you talk like that, it's like, you know, you have to back it up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's a certain point where it's like, no, you have to back it up. When Without getting into specifics, when you got shot... Do you think it was music, drug, or other related? Do you think? It's just other. Other. Okay. Yes. All right.
All right. Well, okay. listen. I got to let you go. You got a whole bunch of stuff going. I, I, I want you to come back though, because there's a hundred different and, stories to talk about. Plus, right. I just want to talk to you about what's going on. Listen Absolutely. real quick. It's only fifteen seconds. It's an Instagram video <laughs> to what uh, Gilly the Kid had to say about Rachel Dolezal. You know the, <laughs> the NAACP <laughs> white woman who was uh, 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 masquerading as a black woman. I acting like they mad at that white woman that was down with the NAACP. Fuck is y'all mad at her fault, nigga? Black is the new white. Y'all hating on her hustle. They give me $250,000. i am down with any white organization. I'm a white man. Nice to meet you. I'm Jeffrey Stanback. Right! <laughs> you fit it in. You got the right in at the end. Absolutely. Well, where can they, where can they find you? I mean, you can find me on Twitter at Gilly the Kids. You can find me on Instagram, Gilly underscore D A underscore K I D. You can find me on Facebook, the same thing. Uh, find me at Gilly the Kid on Snapchat. I got a single out right now with Jeremiah called Tattoo, so make sure y'all go download that. I got another single out right now called Single. That's right. So make sure y'all go check that out as well, and the video will be coming very soon to MTV and all the social outlets. So make sure y'all be looking for it, man. Well, I want you to come back. You can next time. You got a freestyle. You got a hundred, a hundred other stories to talk about. Absolutely. Uh, and we're gonna go to break with the song single. Absolutely, and man, I just want to thank Sam and the whole team for having me because real always recognize real. That's right, and that's what this has been all about. <laughs> thank you very much, Gilly the Kid, and we'll be back with a whole bunch more Sam Roberts show after this. This song is called Single. I feel like Sam Roberts show is dead center. Of this hip-hop beef. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> That's Soldier Boy, for those that don't know. Welcome back to Sam Roberts Show. I'd love to hear what you guys thought of uh, Gilly the Kid. 866-969-1969. 866-969-1969. We got some photos up on SR Show SXM on Twitter. Also, I think Paul was uh, videoing when he took out his diamond tester out of his Louis Vuitton backpack. You can see a quick little snippet of video on SR Show, SXM on Twitter. Oh, Gilly the Kid. I don't know. I feel it was very funny to watch this guy. Like I was like, okay, like we're having fun, but I thought we were gonna get diplomatic answers from him. Like when he was talking about Lil Wayne, it was like, okay, so I guess his like whatever his beef with Lil Wayne is uh, is is over because he's not really talking about it. And then I just kind of brought up Soldier Boy in passing because I was just reading a whole bunch of stuff about Gilly the Kid this morning, trying to you know wrap my head around what I was gonna talk to him about. And then all I do is mention Soldier Boy. And Gilly the Kid said he's going to slap him in his mouth until he's bleeding. <laughs> it's great. hope I'm not in the, in, in, in the middle of uh, any crossfire as far as any of that's concerned, but I feel like we've done everybody a service. Uh, we didn't get to one uh, Gilly the Kid Instagram video that I wanted to play while he was still in here. Again, you want to call the show, 866-969-1969. That's 866-969-1969. Here's another example of Gilly the Kid. This nigga in my comments talk about maybe you feel like that because you ain't got no racial pride. Man, stop with that 1967, we going to march to Alabama shit, nigga. The niggas that broke in my crib and stole my shit was niggas. The <laughs> niggas that shot my homie was niggas. Racial pride, nigga. Fuck wrong with you, nigga. Ain't no such thing as racial pride, nigga, where you grew up up Airy Avenue in the jungle, nigga. All my homies that's been shot or underground, nigga, been shot by niggas fuck you talking about i don't even know what that means and i'm kind of afraid to even start to analyze it i feel like even touching that touching that will get me in trouble with somebody but not not gilly oh he was so and it was so funny watching his face we'll have video we'll have video of the whole thing up on the youtube channel youtube slash not sam but watching his face as he came in because he wasn't like all like ghettoed out when he came in, he was cool. He was himself. He wasn't faking anything, but he was just kind of hanging out and being cool. So to watch his face, because obviously he didn't know that I was going to start playing his fucking grimiest Instagram videos that I could find. Watching his face just go completely. I've never seen a black man turn red, but I think I did today when I played the clip of him talking about how long his dick was. <laughs> uh, we got so much to get to today on Sam Roberts show. Of course, Brian Williams is dominating the news. So Brian Williams is back, back with NBC News, although he's lost his gig. He's not the anchor. I think they're going to give it to that guy, uh, Lester Holt, 
is getting Brian Williams' job. But Brian Williams is uh, he's he's back. He's employed by uh, NBC again, but it looks like after his suspension is up in August, he's going to be a uh, broadcaster for MSNBC, and he's he's going to be taking Lester Holt's job. He's going to be the substitute news anchor. So when news break, breaks and Lester Holt is not around, Mr. Excitement, Mr. Electricity, Lester Holt, when he's not around, uh, Brian Williams is going to cover for him. Oh, that's got to be humiliating uh, for Brian Williams to go from like, not only am I the number one news guy in the country, but I'm on every talk show. Everybody thinks I'm hilarious. Oh, he's not just a news guy. You know, he's also got a sense of humor and blah, blah, blah. It all blew up in his face. And now just to get back to broadcasting, he's got to be a cable news guy or he's the substitute now. He's got to be the fill-in for his job. I've never been in a situation like that, I don't think, where I've gotten myself in such Dutch that I become the fill-in for my own job. But he was on the Today Show this morning, and I think Matt Lauer's new job on the Today Show is just to interview liars. Whenever there's a liar that makes the news, Matt Lauer's got to interview him. He interviewed Rachel Dolezal earlier this week. He's got to be on cloud nine. He's got all the hot interviews. He interviewed Rachel Dolezal, I think, on Monday or Tuesday. You know, we played the clips here on the show. And today, he had Brian Williams that he spent uh, a couple of days with getting this interview. Let's listen to a clip of Brian Williams with Matt Lauer on the Today Show this morning. Looking back, it had to have been ego that made me think I had to be sharper, funnier, uh, quicker, quicker. then he's still talking like a news guy. He sounds like Will Ferrell in Anchorman. He sounds like he's reading something. It had to be ego that everything is like a theatrical reading with him that forced me to be sharper, funnier, edgier. Anybody else uh, put myself closer to the action, having been at the action in the beginning. But was it conscious, Brian? Because let's go back to January when you went on nightly news and you recounted a story about a military veteran who played a role in a harrowing chopper ride you took while covering the Iraqi war. And you told this story. You had told some versions of it in the past in other venues. Did you know it was not true? I told the story correctly for years before I told it incorrectly. I was not trying to mislead people. That, to me, is a huge difference here. How can you believe anybody telling you that they weren't trying to mislead people when they won't even answer the question? He's directly avoiding answering the question that Matt Lauer just asked him. I had an easier time trying to ask Gilly the kid who shot him than Matt Lauer is trying to ask Brian Williams if he was intentionally lying. It's ridiculous. This may be... Call up now, 866-969-1969, 866-969-1969. This may be one of the all-time lousiest fall from graces, in the sense that Brian Williams was the fucking man. Everybody loved this guy before all this happened. Then they turned their back, and now he's just groveling, and he's still, after months of being off the air, if he had any intelligence whatsoever, he'd go on TV, and whether he believes it or not, I don't know how crazy he's gotten himself, but whether he believes it or not, he would just go on TV and say, you know what, I was lying, sorry about that. People can forgive you for lying. They can't forgive you if you don't admit it. Listen to him. Matt Lauer kept pressing him. Matt Lauer, the the liar whisperer. Did you know when you went on nightly news that you were telling a story that was not true? No. Uh, I, I, it came from a bad place. (laughs) It came from a sloppy choice of words. I told stories that were not true over the years. Looking back, it is very clear I never intended to. Uh, It got mixed up. It got turned around uh, in my mind. I don't, again, he's acknowledging that everybody was right, that the stories he was telling weren't true, but he won't fess up to the fact that he was just lying about some of them at some point. He had to realize that he was making shit up. At some point, he had to realize that he was at least, like, pumping it up. 
You know, there's no way that he was sitting there going, this is exactly as it happened. You can't create memories, no matter how bad your ego gets. And Matt Lauer is just sitting there. Well, my strategy while I interview liars is just to ask the same question over and over again until they finally answer. It's the same thing he did with Dolezal. Let's go to Kirby. Hey, Sam, what's up, man? How are you doing? I'm great. Uh, so here's what I had. My opinion. I think Lance Armstrong, this Brian Williams. Oh, uh, Lance Armstrong might be worse, yeah. They I can't. Had the worst falls from grace, I think. Those three dudes. In recent who's, I'm sorry, who's the third person? Uh, the third was, let's see, Brian Williams, Lance, and Tiger Woods. You seen him play last night. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Yeah, Tiger Woods can't even play golf anymore now that he's not getting he his dick even, wet. He can't even play. He doesn't even know how to swing the club. You know, I at mean, some point, I think when this stuff happens, thanks, Kirby. And this is like this is almost like the Mel Gibson thing. It's that bad for him. When this stuff happens, people just need to find new careers. Like, Brian Wilson just needs to find something new to do. Mel Gibson cannot be taken seriously in movies anymore. If you see him in a movie, you're like, oh, that's that guy that hates Jews. And there's no movie that he can be in unless it's like a Nazi movie where it's like, oh, yeah, Mel Gibson. He was great in that. Like, that's never going to work. Tiger Woods, anytime he steps onto a golf course, somebody's going to be whispering, you know how many chicks that guy fucked? He fucked everybody. He fucked a waitress. It doesn't matter to him. I think she worked at, like, Denny's or something. Every, whenever anything like this happens, it just never goes away. And if you just go back to doing what you were doing before, and you never, especially if you never really admit to it or cop to it, you're done. Let's go to uh, Mr. Motherfucker from Whackbag. Hey, Sam. Uh, this is uh, my quick thought here. First off, the way that NBC stacked the deck in uh, Williams' favor here, you know, with Lauer doing the interview, a pre-taped interview, and then of that 13 minutes, that was the best that they could edit together? Yeah, dude, they, 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 had, they, they put, he was on TV for probably nine minutes today, and I'm playing you the very best clips. They had two days with this guy, and you're totally right. This is all they got out of him. Also, I don't think the MSNBC gig is uh, humiliating enough. You don't think putting him on... Right now, and people were going, how can they put him on MSNBC? That's still a news channel. How can anybody take him seriously? Well, right now, the number one newsman on MSNBC is Al Sharpton. So Brian Williams is going to join Al Sharpton to tell the news. Well, I'm just thinking, make him a sideline reporter for NBC Sports' and CFL games. That'd be so fucking great. If he were if, if, if it were him and some hot chick that were just on the sidelines reporting. And That's what he should have to do, honestly. That's what just really humble him. Turn him back into an underdog. Because until you really publicly rub his nose in shit, nobody... Nobody's going to forget him. He's going to have a show on MSNBC, and everybody's going to turn it on, and they're going to be like, oh, that's that liar from before. Yeah, 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 that guy who lies all the time. Yeah, oh, what's he talking about? Oh, I'm sure it's a lie. Eric, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Hey, Sam Wombat, what's happening? That's right. I'm working on it, dude. I'm working on it. <laughs> cool. Hey, I just want to say, uh, thanks to Brian Williams, this is a first in American history. You know that? What is that? Because this is the first time in America that someone has lied on the news. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're being sarcastic. I don't know. The delivery was not there. But, yeah, you're, I mean, look, people lie on the news all the time. The point is you can't get caught. I think everybody just understands that. You can't get caught. That's it. John, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Hey, Sam, how are you? Good, pal. Uh, so, Brian Williams, I mean, this is all just a disguise. I think he'd rather lie to America a hundred times over than see his daughter get her ass eaten on TV one more time. So you think that he's sitting there going like, look, I'm going to keep lying and I'm never going to admit that I'm lying as long as people stop talking about the fact that if you turn on HBO, my daughter's getting her asshole eaten. You're damn right. <laughs> it makes sense, John, because that's, that's the other other thing that I thought. And literally, I was walking here. I'd watch the Brian Williams thing, and I was walking to the studio, and I was just thinking, I'm like, you know, Brian Williams is never going to escape this. Every, only thing, I, I think two things. That's right. I think two things when I see Brian Williams, and one of them is not slow jamming the news. I don't care how many Jimmy Fallon's you do. Two things I think. Number one. He's a liar. Number two, I saw his daughter getting her butt licked on HBO. Mike, you're on Sam Roberts' show. You there, Mike? Mama Booey! Is Bennington? No, this is... Um, first of all, if you call Baba Bennington Booey. and say Baba Booey, he'll be just as annoyed as I am. So it's a bad call Baba for either Bennington, show. Please. All right, goodbye, Mike. 
Jake in New Jersey. You there, Jake? All right. We're going to Rich in Tennessee then. What's up, Rich? Hey, hey Sam. How you doing today, buddy? Good, pal. Hey, man. I, you know, maybe it's just uh, that I'm thinking NBC wasted too much money, but they should have just followed the you know, page out of WWE's handbook and let Brian come back. Just make him wear a mask. Nobody would know the difference. Yeah. El Brian Williams, though. Yeah. Yeah. You could, I think you could pull it off. Here's the thing. I think NBC was bringing him back for a similar reason why when Opie and Anthony got fired from terrestrial radio, they kept him under contract because Brian, because uh, NBC realizes that he's an embarrassment, but they also realize that wherever he goes, people are going to watch, at least for the freak show aspect. So they don't want him getting out of the contract. They'd have to pay out his contract and then they'd have to compete with him and people are going to watch him just to see what he's lying about this week. You know how great it is to have a news anchor that just makes shit up? The news would be exciting every single week. There's no such thing as a slow news night because Brian Williams is there to just make it up off the top of his head. Let's hear the last clip. This is uh, Matt Lauer really, really trying to get to the bottom of this. You use terms like I'm mistaken. I was mistaken in my recollections and then on other apologies, conflated aircraft. Did you give thought at the time to going on the air and saying I lied? I know why people would see it that way. <laughs> uh, it's not what happened. He, then what the fuck happened, Brian Williams? Did your brain just collapse on itself? Do you not have the ability to retain memory? Like, if, if we're to believe what Brian Williams is telling us, then anytime he gets told a story, it just confuses the memory. Hey, Brian, remember when we went to McDonald's? Yeah, well, it was Del Frisco's. Oh, that was a great meal that night. Steve. Jenny. What's going on, pal? How's it going, man? Good. First time in a long time. That's right. Yeah, I <laughs> uh, what are we talking about uh, Fall from Graces? Yeah, Fall from Graces. So, so far, some of the worst of all time. Brian Williams is among... Hang on. Brian Williams is among the worst of all time. Tiger Woods, I think, is a little different in the sense that it was a little more sensational. But just just, uh, just falling apart. Like, I don't think Tiger Woods fell apart. I think it was just he liked to fuck chicks. Brian Williams has fallen apart because he, he Tiger Woods was still a good golfer. Like, if Tiger Woods was cheating at golf... Th this would be similar. But Tiger Woods was still good at, at golfing. Uh, so I would put I, this Brian Williams. I would put the, the uh, Armstrong uh, and, and the bike scandal when he was cheating. I, I think you're leaving off the biggest one. You're, you're missing the most obvious. How about Nixon? Nixon was a bad one. I just don't know how much people trusted Nixon at the end anyway. Like, I, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm too young to know, but were people really that surprised when they find out, found out Nixon was a crook? All right, how could they not be? He's the president of the United States. I guess, but like, if you told me today that Barack Obama is a crook, I'd be like, yeah, I kind of saw that coming. Well, you know what right. I mean? Let's go to, uh, this is a good call. Let's go to Sean. Hey, Sammy Roberts, professional broadcaster. What's up, buddy? What's up, Pally? Hey, uh, I deployed a bunch of times uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, and I kind of want to come to Brian Williams' defense because, you know, when, when crazy stuff is happening, sometimes your memories get screwed up. Now, that being said, he is a reporter, so he has an obligation to figure out exactly what happens before he tells a story. So I'm kind of on the fence on it. Yeah, and I think there's evidence of him, when he first got home, telling the story the way it happened. And then as the years went on, it kind of morphed into this more sensational thing where he was a much bigger part of it than he actually was. And I think that happens when there's shit exploding or, you know, if a, if a helicopter has to do a forced landing... It, your brain kind of remembers things really weird. So you're not calling stolen valor on Brian Williams? I'm not, buddy. Um, you know, I, I'm i kind of sitting on the fence. I think he has an obligation as a professional to make sure that the story he's telling is true. But at the same time, as a human being in a very stressful situation... Shit gets fucked up in your head. Shit does get fucked up, and like I don't, I don't mind if a if a veteran doesn't remember every single detail of what happened. But the, the, if a reporter can't remember what happened while he was reporting from the scene, don't send him to the scene. He should just stay in the studio then, where his memory goes unfucked with. Mike, hey, how you doing, Sam? Good, buddy. Um, um, What's your name? Bill Clinton with Monica Lewinsky, and with he didn't inhale. 
Dude, he didn't even fall from grace. First of all, he didn't inhale. He was like, yeah, I smoke weed sometimes. And like the Monica Lewinsky thing, he's like, of course I get fucking blown. I'm Bill Clinton. I don't even think, I don't even think the country Really, the Republicans had a field day with it, but I don't. I to this day, he's still very much beloved. You know what I mean? Like women still kind of love Bill Clinton, even though they know he got blown by an intern and shoved a cigar inside of her. They still love him. I think Bill Clinton is the ultimate tale of survival. If you want to know the truth. Yep, you're absolutely right, Sam. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Bye, bye, Sean. Sam, you're Bill Cosby. You're fucking right, dude. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby, I feel like is the top of the mountain. Like I feel like Bill Cosby is that thing where once you bring up Bill Cosby, when you're talking about some of the worst falls from grace ever, once you bring up Bill Cosby, it's like all right, we're not even fighting fair then. You know, it's like like when people bring up you know baseball dynasties, you don't even want to bring up the Yankees because you get annoyed because. You know, they buy their players and blah, blah, blah. You don't even want to bring up Bill Cosby because his fall from grace is so sensational and over the top that it's not even, nothing compares to it. Jacob, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Sammy Roberts, man. It's good to hear you again. How's it going? Good, buddy. Now, I think the biggest problem why this happens in the first place is most people have a job that they would like to have be a little bit better. So it tends to happen like that. I'm a security guard at a closed down prison so when i tell girls sometimes i'm getting to know them what i do they think i'm a corrections officer which is totally different i don't carry a shotgun i don't break up fights i work at a closed down prison so i would get in the habit of going along with the corrections officer thing right i get that and then like go ahead i'm sorry i get that but at no point did you ever actually believe you were a corrections officer i hope no, I'm not one, but it would get confusing. I would kind of go with it because it's more impressive than my actual job title. And then I noticed I would have to like tell a lie, then tell another lie. Then I'd have to make up uh, stories about fights and mess halls and breaking up fights. And I was like, fuck this. I'm going to just be honest with what the fuck I am. But, but yeah, but eventually you got to the point where you can come to me right now and tell me you were lying about this stuff. Brian Williams is still going on TV. And Matt Lauer, as I said, is the liar whisperer. Whenever there's a liar that's in the news they talk to matt lauer and they confess their lies to him matt lauer had him in the hot seat for two days and brian williams will still not confess to outwardly and knowingly lying about this jacob you'll tell me that you knowingly lied about it not yeah. because you intended to lie but because you had started this story and it kind of just got carried away if brian williams went on tv and was like you know what i said the story once it sounded good i got carried away and i kind of forgot that i should be telling the truth that is like okay i respect that dude like he's coming clean he's coming to me and saying like yeah i was lying and and this is the truth he's not doing that at all Instead, he's even, saying, even, yeah, go even ahead. if he doesn't absolutely like believe it 100% that he has to do that, like because of the position he put himself in, that's what he has to do. He has to do the public apology. He has to do the I'm sorry. And he doesn't want to do it. And that's why people don't want to let it go, because he has to persist that he didn't lie when he did. Right. They're never. You're right, Jacob. They're never going to let it go. Just like they're never going to let it go. His his daughter's. But being licked on HBO. I'm just looking at photos of it on Twitter right now. It looks sensational. Let's go to Mike. What's going on, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, hey. What's up, buddy? What's up, bud? Uh, speaking of false from graces, I know a young kid that was lighting up the Nickelodeon world on fire <laughs> with a quarter flicking talent that was unbelievable. And the kid got pushed and pushed. His father made him flick <laughs> quarters across the room into objects. And you never heard from the poor kid again. Can I tell you something? I feel for that kid. I told, when after a couple weeks ago, maybe we'll play it on the best of uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, I a couple, a couple weeks ago, I told the story of being on Figure It Out and my dad making me practice flick quarters and everything. I ended up writing the story down, the full story for something that I'm working on. And I've realized that that is the complete uh, 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 birth of... Of my being prone to depression, of my insecurity, of everything. It all comes from doing that stupid game show and then fucking Letterman not bringing me up to the show. That's what everything comes from there, I think. Uh, Mike, Mike, you're on Sam Roberts' show. You there, Mike? Everybody's named Mike, Mike today. Mark. Mark? Listen. Mark. 
His name is Mark, Paul. Hang on, Mark. Let me explain to Paul what's going on here. Paul is just a Mike factory. He thinks everybody's name is Mike today. What do you got for the show, Mike? Uh, it's Eddie. Go ahead, Mike. What do you got, Mike? His name is Mark. All Mark wants to do is call a radio show, interact with a massive star like primetime Sam Roberts, and get his name heard on the air. And instead, he's got to hear Mike. Paul, I need you to listen to these people when they call. All right, Mike, go ahead. All right, I'm calling you guys out. Last year, y'all were talking about you're sick and tired of people apologizing. You had, how many days can we go without people apologizing? Well, now you've got a couple of people who aren't apologizing for the shit they've done. And you're on their fucking back. I don't need. I don't need. I don't even need an apology. I don't give a fuck about apologies. People come to me all the time, like, "Oh, Sam, I'm sorry I did that." I'm like, I don't care. I'll let your actions be. I don't need anyone to ever apologize to me. You don't need to apologize. I'm about to tell you, Mike. 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 (laughs) I'm about to tell you. (laughs) Don't don't make fun of me for who I am, Mike. That's my soul. You know that I'm transitioning. Listen, what I'm saying is. I don't need an apology from Brian Williams. I don't need an apology from anyone in life. What I need for Brian Williams to do is if he's going to come back on TV as a newscaster, just go on TV and be like, you know what? I was lying. It was stupid. I'm not going to do it again. Just admit what you did. I don't need people to apologize, but I need people to be culpable for their own actions. I need people to take personal responsibility. The minute... Yeah, but you don't get one without the other. Well, then have the other happen, but the, I'm, I'm willing to listen to an apology if it means somebody is going to take personal responsibility. I hate, hate people who won't take personal responsibility. For instance, Paul, who everything that screws up here is his fault. And he won't take the responsibility for it. (laughs) Thank you, Mike. I'll talk to you later. Uh, Jordan. Primetime Sam Roberts. What's going on, pal? I got uh, two great downfalls to add. Tell me. On a little bit of a lesser scale. Yes. First, let's hit him with the uh, rap extraordinaire DMX. I don't know if DMX. I feel like DMX is going to give it to you. You know, and whether it's now or whether it's later, at some point, X is still going to give it to you. It's dark and hell is hot, and it got pretty goddamn hot. For it's this. super hot, dude. And uh, second one from uh, WWF, Mr. Razor Ramon. Yeah, Razor Ramon, I mean, that whole E60 thing, that was kind of a fall from grace, but then he came back up. I mean, you can have a fall from grace once you're, like, he's, Razor Ramon is like a wrestler from, like, the 90s. Like, he's too old. Even if he was sober, he wouldn't be the fucking bad guy anymore. So, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of okay with that. Eddie in North Dakota. How about Jimmy the Greek? Ah, great fall from grace. A little different in the sense that he wasn't... Like, he just said one thing and the world came down on him. But one of the great uh, 30 for 30s is about Jimmy the Greek. And it talks about what, like, a beloved, beloved figure this Jimmy the Greek was. He was helping every gambler win money. Everybody loved him. He was just a character. He's just such a character. I love watching him. And then what happens... He has to make one comment. It gets perceived as racial. And this was before everybody was freaking out about race. One comment gets perceived as racial. And all of a sudden, he's public enemy numero uno. But he walked away. He was done. He was finished. You know? That was it for him. He didn't get the fucking MSNBC and substitute news anchor gig. Ian, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Sammy, hello from Canada. What's going on, pal? Well... Lots. (laughs) Lots. <laughs> but the one thing I, I think we're overlooking here with all this talk about who fell from grace, I got two words for you, Sam. Suck it. Jimmy Swaggart. Who's Jimmy Swaggart? Come on. I don't know. Famous, famous, uh, you know, Jesus guy who's preaching to people all the time, and he, he was just caught doing everything. Love, you know, love, love seeing those fake religious people go down. Those people who just... Oh, God. Yeah. No uh, pun intended there. I think there was a little pun intended. I think you worked on that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right. a little. You're a professional broadcaster. That's what you do. Right. Thanks, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Let's go to Doug in New Jersey. What's going on, Doug? Hey, Sam. What's going on? Chilling. I got I got two of the come to my head real quick. I got mm-hmm. Mel Gibson and Lance Armstrong. Yeah, we talked about... I think Lance Armstrong fits perfectly. Uh, I guess Mel Gibson fits too. Although that being a, found out that you're a racist is probably even worse. Let's go to Michelle. What's going on, Michelle? 
Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Millie Vanilli, that's great. This, he did Millie Vanilli. For a news anchor to get caught lying is about like being a pop artist and having your tape fucking run backwards. Yeah, I think Millie Vanilli, that's a great call, Michelle. Surprised I didn't think of that being the genius that I am. Uh, Justin. Hey, Sammy. What's going on, pal? How about Joe Paterno? Joe Paterno, I don't know if Joe Paterno had a fall from grace as much as uh, What's-His-Face did. Huh? Perfect. Yeah, Sandusky. I, mean, I would, I would give the, the I, I would give the fall from grace to Sandusky on that one because you find out that after all these years, Sandusky is like somebody you trust, you trust, you trust, and then you find out he was fondling kids all this time. Uh, now, definitely, Joe Paterno did take a hit in the public eye, and he fucking ended his life on a weak, weak note. But. Um, ice water, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Listen, we got a lot of stuff to get to. It's a very musical show. I posted a, a video of Anya Marina performing on this very show last Friday. She performed the whistle song, so I want to play that for you as we go to break. We still got a lot to talk about. Speaking of songs, maybe we'll keep it musical. How many of you have heard the Rachel Dolezal song. You remember Rachel Dolezal? She's the one that, uh, she's the, the white woman who pretended to be black and was in the NAACP and all that. Her ex fiance, apparently, she casts a spell over these men because her ex fiance wrote and performed a song about her that's hit YouTube. Maybe we'll play that when we come back. But first, this is Anya Marina in studio last week performing Whistle on Sam Roberts' show. I forgot to say when, uh, Gilly the Kid was in here an hour or so ago. I was reading the article about people who uh, uh, got shot, rappers that got shot and survived, and Gilly the Kid was one of them. Apparently, the guy who played Biggie Smalls in the movie, the Biggie movie, Notorious, he's a rapper as well. And he got shot and survived and went and did an interview before he even went to the hospital. But then the cops investigated it, and this article said that he had one of the members of his crew shoot him for the publicity. So <laughs> it ended up being very negative publicity, I'm sure. Welcome back to Sam Roberts show. We got a couple more minutes hanging out with you on this Friday. Of course, if you missed anything this week, make sure you tune into the Best of the Week show. It's on late night tonight on this channel and then it'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern, you know that time. Sunday at noon Eastern here on XM103 Series 206. It'll have all the best stuff that happened. I mean, on it quite honestly Every show this week that we did was uh, fucking incredible. No thanks to Paul. And uh, uh, you can listen to all of them, of course, on demand. And Paul, I'm only teasing you. Well, I'm half serious. Let's go to Carl in Florida. What's going on, Carl? Holy motherfucking shit. World famous professional broadcaster Sam Roberts is taking my call? That's right, Carl. Holy shit. All right, this is the deal. I'm a professional uh, broadcaster. Sorry, you're not. No, I am. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not in your league, bro. That's I'm right. not even close to you. All right, all right. But, as long as we understand each other. No doubt, man. <laughs> Got you. I, I feel you. Yo, listen, so um, I heard a... I'm a professional music video producer and director. Mm -hmm. uh, my Twitter handle, shameless plug, is at Video Verna. Um, I heard this young lady singing the hip hop to an acoustic set. Yeah. I don't know who she is, but I would like to do a music video for her for free. Well, definitely. Right. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll tell her to be on the lookout for it. Her name is Anya Marina. You can get her on Twitter. I'll tell her to be on the lookout for your tweet and you can see the other stuff she's done. She came in here and did that song that we played before break whistle. And a month or two ago, she came in and did a a version of T.I.'s Whatever You Like. Both those videos are up at YouTube.com slash Not Sam, so you can see her performing it in studio. She really is. I mean, uh, I think she's incredible. I think she's a super, super talented uh, lady. Well, I mean, I got to tell you, man, to keep it real, I hope my wife isn't listening, but I was quite aroused. Oh, my God, and you should see her do it in person. She is, it is among the sexiest things you've ever seen. You could, you could, uh, the, in the uh, in the T.I. cover video, you can see one of our guys, Adrian, just fucking broing yeah. it up in the background, and he definitely had a half a chub. Definitely. Lord, I'm driving my car right now on I-4 in Florida, and I was, yes. <laughs> you were you're pinching the helmet. It's okay. It does that to everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. I'll talk to you later, buddy. You're welcome, Sam. Peace, bro. All right, man. Uh, while we still have some time... 
I guess I really wanted to play uh, the Rachel Dolezal song. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to wait until Monday, though, when we have some... I, I've got like four minutes. Play the song. No, I just play the uh, Stephanopoulos clip. Um, it was really funny on GMA. Mindy Kaling was on. And I'll play, don't worry, I'll play the Rachel Dolezal song on Monday. People will still be talking about that story on Monday. Um, and we'll have on Monday Putty from Seinfeld. The guy who played Putty, he's going to be on Sam Roberts' show. Isn't that exciting, Paul? Yeah. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know. He's like, oh, Putty, you like the guy from Silly Putty? Uh, George Stephanopoulos yesterday on Good Morning America was interviewing Mindy Kaling. Mindy Kaling's in that new uh, animated movie. I think it's called uh, what, Inside Out. Yeah. It's about, it's like the, you, you see what's going on in the brain of this 11 year old girl, and it's animated characters. And Lewis Black was on Opie Show talking about it this week. He plays Anger, obviously, and Mindy Kaling plays something or other. But uh, Mindy Kaling was on talking to George Stephanopoulos, and you can hear in this clip the difference between somebody who's funny and somebody who's a fucking dork. You can, because listen to what George Stephanopoulos says, and listen to how immediately. Mindy Kaling's comic mind realizes exactly what happened and how George Stephanopoulos, probably still to this day, probably knows that this video has gone viral and has no idea why. Listen to this. Yeah. Hey, eyelashes, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But the, the movie really is amazing. My girls were completely engrossed by it when we were watching it because <laughs> it, it really does make you feel like you're inside this 11-year-old girl. <laughs> In a profoundly wholesome way. Yes. And, 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 and what was it like to be part of it all? Well, it was amazing. I was like, so excited to. He see just keeps going, and Mindy Kaling's like, "All right, well, he does not realize that he just said that he felt like he was inside of an eleven-year-old girl, penetrating an eleven-year-old girl." How long do you think it was before George Stephanopoulos realized that he came off sounding like a pedophile? There's no way. As soon as he said that, I was like, "What the fuck did he just say?" And then there's that awkward pause, which is Mindy just kind of looking at him like, "You realize what you just did, dude? Like, do you did you just?" Say that for sure? Like, he definitely said that, right? And George Stephanopoulos just has this fucking news guy smiling face like, well, aren't you going to answer the question? Mindy Kaling's like, well, whatever. In the most wholesome of ways. And even when she said, listen again, even when she said in the most wholesome of ways, George Stephanopoulos still has no clue why she would even bring that up. Well, we're just going to go to the next question then, I guess. Yeah. Right yeah. Listen, wait for the, the wait. The movie really is amazing. My girls were completely engrossed by it when we were watching <laughs> it because it, it really does make you feel like you're inside this 11 year old girl. <laughs> In a profoundly wholesome way. Yes. And, 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 and what was it like to be part of there's it? There's like a, an well, off camera, there's like an so off excited. camera laugh. There, there, she's just filling an awkward silence, sucking her teeth like, uh,. Are we not going to acknowledge what just happened? And you can see if you watch the clip, and we'll post the clip at SR Show SXM on Twitter. Uh, we'll post the clip right now. You can see on this chick's face that she knows exactly what just happened. And George Stephanopoulos is not just trying to move on like nothing happened. He has no clue why anybody would be laughing. Like, I'm sorry. Is there something on my face? Did I did I step in something? I don't I don't know exactly what you're what you're laughing at. It's really, really funny. Check out the clip. It's on SR Show, SXM on Twitter. Now, Paul, we're going to try your bit. You ready? Grab that mic. All right. It's time for Paul to kind of give it. A lot happened, I feel like, on today's show. That was a, uh, our opening segment about the shooting. And then we're talking about George Stephanopoulos just now. We were talking about uh, Brian Williams and, and uh, Gilly the Kid was in here. So uh, without further ado, I believe... We're ready for Paul to uh, read the list. We have more access to guns than health care. Uh, Gilly the Kid said you, we can only see his uh, wrist bullet scar when he moved his big expensive watch. He has a big dick. He <laughs> bitch slapped blood out of Soldier Boy. Uh, you have permission to say the N-word from both Who Kid and Gilly. Tattoos hurt more than getting shot. Matt Lauer is a lie whisperer. And the biggest fall from grace is Millie Vanilli. There it is. Mr. Electricity. You can only get that here. That's Paul. That's Paul lighting shit on fire like he always does. Way to go, Paul. And way to pay attention to the show. Listen, I appreciate everybody. Another week in the can. Again, if you missed any of it, listen on demand. SiriusXM.com slash on demand. You can find Sam Roberts Show on Opie Radio, obviously. And the best of, which will be late night tonight and Sunday at noon. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. It's going to be a big week next week. 
uh, uh, Bob Kelly will be in. Putty from Seinfeld. One of the chicks from Orange is the New Black. Whole bunch of stuff happening next week here on Sam Roberts Show. We'll see you Monday. Bye, everybody.